All right, guys, welcome back. We're back in, I don't know where we've been over these other episodes, but we're back in the studio now. Well, yeah, because you're going to see that one before you're going to see others. So you, I, there's a few things I said in the podcast you're going to see after this one that I'm going to correct today because you're okay. not going to see them in order because I want this one to come out right away. Yeah, this one I'll put out probably... Right away. Right away. Right yeah, away. This will go straight to This one has to go I'll right away. I'll put this one out straight to public. Yeah, and then exactly. This one has to go right away. Yeah. Uh, but so you're going to see uh, in the next podcast where I'm saying certain things where I'm not sure. And that's what actually I found out today. So I'm correcting some of the stuff that I said. I mean, amongst and adding a few. <laughs> All right. Well, this is going to be an expansion on a lot of things. Oh. But the gist of this is... Muscle gain and fat loss? Holy, gra holy Grail. The Holy Grail. That's right. going to be the title of the podcast, The, the holy, holy Grail, Grail. Intuition Point. Right. Yeah, <laughs> this seems to be that. I'll make an entire life of Brian kind of thing on that. <laughs> or oh, actually, actually King Arthur, obviously. King Arthur of that, uh, over this. But uh, yes, they see, yes, that's what this is. Yeah. Like in, I don't know exactly the, yeah, this is the Holy Grail of stuff. It's, this will link to... This cannot not link to the, um, what do you call that? To the um, entropy stuff. Mm -hmm. Like this cannot not link to the Paul Davis stuff, the Demon yeah. the Machine, like this, it has to be. Yeah. It's very, it's, it's fascinating. All right, where do we want to start? Uh, well, I have to go chronically to explain how I got to this, right? So lately uh, I've been having an issue with adrenaline. Not me personally, but you know, uh, adrenaline when it comes to gly uh, glycolysis and gluconeogenesis and all that stuff. And there's a bunch of stuff. No, yeah. it does not. And so actually, I talk about this in one of the in the podcasts we've done before, where uh, adrenaline, by the way, faster than on a fasted state or not fasted state, does not activate the same energy pathway. So you mm -hmm. go, what? And basically, it's telling you that it that it does both, that it does both glycogenesis, glyc glyc glyconeogenesis and glycolysis at the same point, which is the same cycle, just opposite pathway. So it's like, no, it can't, because you can't do opposite energy pathways. Well, turn out, actually, you can. not So mm -hmm. that, no, 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 that actually. But anyway, I was starting to run into issues. And when I start to run into those issues that fundamentally tell you you're missing something on a principal level, that means you're asking the wrong questions. Yeah. So I knew I was asking the wrong question. So I was like, all right, so let me try to ask the right question. So I start looking around and reading and, and stuff like that. And I think the last paper I, I put is actually brand new, if I'm not mistaken. And the gist of that whole paper uh, going into the uh, catecholamine, so you know, like what they call the stress hormones, mm -hmm. I'm going into norepinephrine versus epinephrine. So noradrenaline versus adrenaline, right? And I know they don't do the same thing. Like they kept telling you it's a sympathetic thing. I was like, there's no fucking way. It's too, it, it makes no sense that they would do this, that it would be the same. Like, so let me explain why. Norepinephrine is mostly produced in the brain. Okay. Right, in the locus coriolis. Uh, coriolis. Uh, it's mostly produced that. So if you guys remember a podcast I talked about, the lactate is a, what they call a nastros, Acidic signaling molecule. So the lactate is a molecule that that will through the astrocyte, you know, the, those cells in the brain, to get the brain to produce norepinephrine. Okay. Right. So there's an entire relationship between the lactate and norepinephrine. Norepinephrine. So or no adrenaline. By the way, it's the same thing. Epinephrine adrenaline is exactly yeah. the same thing. They're just two different names. Uh, there's an entire thing that is very interesting. For example, a lot of antidepressant pills are. Uh, based on norepinephrine. Mm -hmm. So it's something that relates to the sympathetic nervous system. So you have, it's mostly produced in the brain, but it's also produced at the, at the sympathetic uh, innervation. You know, where the sympathetic so ends. Down into right. the skin because norepinephrine is a neurotransmitter first. Okay. At rest, when nothing is crazy, it's a neurotransmitter first. It is the neurotransmitter of the sympathetic side. Okay. That's norepinephrine. So it can be produced mostly in the brain, it's also produced in the sympathetic, at the end of the sympathetic nerves, and actually in very, very, very specific 
uh, circumstances, it can be produced, produces what they call the adrela, uh, adrenal medulla, so the, the adrenal glands, if you want. Yeah. Right. I'm like, all right, so that's norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is a sympathetic nervous system. And you see that, for example, when, um, you know, when you're in hypoglycemia, so blood sugar goes low, you, you have norepinephrine coming down. You see that with uh, hypoxia. You know, like when they train and not enough oxygen, at a certain moment, you see the stuff. Mm -hmm. So whenever the sympathetic drops, you see a drop in norepinephrine. So it's like, all right. So it seems to be, there's an entire indication between uh, between that. And if you start actually on the chemical level to make the bond, you get glucose level, sympathetic, thermo... Um, uh, what do you call them? Fuck, what is it called? Um, it's too much for me this morning. Uh, where I'm at. Thermogenesis. Uh, thermogenesis, yeah, that's what I thought. Thermogenesis, okay. producing heat, it's all levels of the sympathetic nervous system. So I was like, all right, so that's, that's very interesting. And then you get into adrenaline. And so adrenaline is not produced in the brain, it's produced in the adrenaline glands, mm -hmm. hence the name. So I'm like, all right. And so I start to look deeper and deeper and deeper into this. And what do I see is that once one the there's a dissociation between the so the sympathetic and the production of, of adrenaline. So what do I mean? It means when the sympathetic drops down, the adrenaline goes up. So for example, hypoglycemia, mm -hmm. you see the noradrenaline comes down and um, adrenaline goes up. I was like, wait. <laughs> that seems like it would be the inverse if I'm just thinking right. about Right, if you're just sympathetic, yeah. So no epinephrine, epinephrine should go together. Yeah. No. For example, you eat carbs and you see adrenaline coming down first and rising three, four hours later. About the time of the crash. Well, so <laughs> when the adrenaline comes, you get the, you get the, the carbs. Insulin mm -hmm. goes up, adrenaline comes down. Yeah. But then raises after. I was like, oh, so no adrenaline goes up with insulin. But adrenaline comes down. I was like, "What?" But that, so, I, so then that separates that separates adrenaline from its from any like direct one to one influence or on the sympathetic. Well, actually, sympathetic. it seems to be inverse. Yeah. Inversed. So I was like, so I, so I was like, wait, what? And so there's an entire conversation we'll have, I guess, on a different podcast about this about why carbs come when people say it calms me down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it lowers your adrenaline levels. Yeah. So it lowers the, uh, the either the flight freeze or whatever. We're going to talk about this today to a degree, but I have to do another podcast on this. Okay. So I was like, so that's why carbs make you feel better. It's not just raising the blood sugar. It's also lowering the adrenaline levels. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, and so that's why you see people like high carbs all the time have adrenaline issue. Oh yeah, yeah, this, yeah. Oh yeah. It, go, it keeps going on and on and on. So anyway, so just there's like the, a, yeah, there's like a dozen things I want to just infer. I know, <laughs> but there's, there's so no much to right put now. into this yeah, already, yeah. right? So basically, yeah. if you look, I have to stop saying basically. Uh, if you look at that paper, what it states is that adrenaline comes about to keep life-saving mechanism going mm -hmm. when. Noradrena when noradrenaline stops, when the sympathetic goes out. Okay. So adrenaline is there to save you when the sympathetic goes out. Do you remember the phylogenetic wheel? Yeah. Right. So what does that mean? It's going to be right on towards freeze. Then it's a freeze agent. You know what's crazy is noradrenaline is localized. So that it's a neurotransmitter. Mm -hmm. It's localized. I have here, like the, the stuff yeah. produces noradrenaline to directly put the sympathetic into that muscle or the fat bunny or whatever. Yeah. Adrenaline is an overall, it's blood transmission, it's everywhere. Gotcha. That reminds you a lot of the immune There's system. A specificity and a versus, You know, remember the killer cells versus, mm -hmm. right. So it's the same, about the same idea. Yeah. But so there's a difference between the two. So once you stop being localized and you become overall, that's when you go from, that's the fight flight to freeze. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, so adrenaline is an agent is an agent of freeze. Yeah. Well, and that's that's going to be. It's just so strange because I think right. I, was, I used to always think of adrenaline as your, your your mad dash, your mad energy expense. When it really sounds like it fits on the side of energy conservation. But then, then you it will. Kind of. yeah, well, yeah, because uh, survival wise, I guess. Well, because yeah. it makes the inside work, mm -hmm. while the outside can't do shit anymore. Yeah. So it's it's the freeze mode. So that's why when you get fucking so scared, 
So look at localized versus generalized stuff. Yeah. Where is the first thing that when you go toward flight, right? You start to freak out, you lose coordination. Yeah. I would say you lose localization. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you, so there's an entire thing there, right? And then you just go like this. Yeah. And then if you up the adrenaline even more, you're scared out of your wits in a ball. But for example, if you're in freeze mode, that doesn't mean you're not scared anymore. On the contrary, you're even more scared. Yeah. But you can't move. So that's adrenaline. So adrenaline is freeze, but keeps everything going because adrenaline is going to actually create, <laughs> going back to, uh, do I go there? Yeah. I'm going to link all this as we go. It's just, it get, like it comes from all ends. It's, it's insane. But you see, see what I mean? Yeah. Like, so that means that adrenaline is a freeze mode. Yeah. Well, it almost seems like a, like a very uh, like high amplitude version of freeze. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As though like, like 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 high adrenaline in that state is right, seems but, like a, a a greater magnitude. Right, but remember, like for example, rape. Yeah. Right, where women have, a lot of women have talked about like not understanding why they freeze completely. Mm -hmm. It's a life saving mechanism. Yeah. Well, adrenaline then. Yeah. Obviously. Right, and so you can't do anything, but the body has to keep on going, and so that's where, like the whole glycolysis and all that stuff is going to come in. Because I was like, I don't understand how all that shit can work. And so there was a huge difference between no adrenaline and adrenaline. Are they always operate in the inverse of each other? Those two, or is there states uh, not, in not which Not quite, it's both? because that's where the adrenaline- This is always gonna be probably the fluid modulation. Yeah, but plus the adrenaline medulla can produce norepinephrine if required. Okay. So, but that's where, now you start to see where the flight could be. And then be. there's different needs that are gonna be created. So it's brain versus point. body, by the way. Yeah. Because it's either the brain produces it or the 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 adre, adrenal medulla right. the glands produce it so it seems that the gland take over whenever the brain cannot okay so this entire fight versus flight there that i'm like i can smell it i just don't know exactly where it is yet <laughs> but like it gets so i'm like oh all yeah. right so there's something there already so just we'll have to do a podcast on this but adrenaline as a, as a freeze agent i was like so right away here goes the, the phylogenetic hierarchy has to be somewhat not rewritten but uh Rethought i'm gonna have to be well bit. it's it's uh, adrenaline I, I, well that's my problem is i've been going at adrenaline for a long time now mm -hmm. and i couldn't place it yeah i was like fuck where is it well in, in something that at least most people have an understanding that it has a massive role in at least the modulation of energy so metabolism one way or another right another. exactly and, and that's gonna and be also one. like like literally like neural output is, right is, so actually what it has to be is metabolism yeah. That's the key to adrenaline. Neural output moving is going to be neurotransmitters, going to be no adrenaline. Yeah. Then adrenaline is metabolism, actually. That seems to be the key. Okay. It, it's Which all is, about makes metabolism. Sense general versus specific. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so now we're starting to get into an issue that I had, which means adrenaline seems to promote uh, glo uh, glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. So if you guys don't remember, gl uh, glycolysis is take the glucose, produce lactate. Mm -hmm. Gluconeogenesis is take lactate produce glucose. So they do both at the same time. And so I was like, you can't do both at the same time. What would be the point? Yeah. And I was like, then it can't be. And again, but I asked the wrong, um, this is actually, I asked the right question at that moment. What would be the point? Except I disregarded the right question. Mm -hmm. So, because I keep reading papers that show both. So I was like, well, okay, did they fuck up that big about this? It's like, how can you guys say both at the same time? That makes no sense. But that's not true. That makes sense. I just did not ask the right question, which is, what would be the point? Logical fallacies, people. I fell yeah. into that one myself. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, all right, what would be the point? So I keep digging and I discovered that actually it's not true at all. Uh, you can have both at the same time. You can have lipolysis and lip lipogenesis at the same time. You can have opposite part of the same cycle at the same time. It's called a futile cycle or a substrate cycle. It happens all the time. And usually it is done to produce heat. When you say produce heat, is that primarily, are you talking f like... Producing uh, heat, like straight up. Like for any reason, really. Yeah, but whether yeah. it is via via blood flow or, or if it is just body temperature modulation. Body temperature modulation. Oh, okay. That's what this is. Okay. This is what we think so far is because if I have uh, glucose into lactate, lactate into glucose, I produce ATP. Mm -hmm. It produces, uh, and then I burn it off. Yeah. I burn it off as heat. So just pure. Basically. Okay. Yeah. So, and it seems that... It's like the, revving your engine and fucking neutral. We're only going to get heat. <laughs> right. Yeah. But heat being a measure of entropy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Right. So I'm getting rid of entropy. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So now I'm going to go further into, no, I'm not going to go, that'll be another podcast, but wait, wait, because I'm just starting. Like this is where the shit starts to get crazy. So I'm like, all right, so producing ATP. So one of, one of the ways you could, you could look at it is when there's too much ATP being stacked, so molecule of energy being stacked and not being, being spent, you stop glycolysis. You stop glucose into, uh, into lactate. So now you don't have the fuel and glucose accumulate. The body does not like that. So a way to regulate too much ATP. Just use it. Just use it. How do you use it? You burn it off. So a futile cycle, that particular, so the lactate futile cycle, mm -hmm. that's not how they call it because they say pyruvate. They cure. You have to translate as you read that <laughs> shit. Um, the la let's call it the lactate futile cycle yeah. is designed to produce heat in case to basically get too much ATP and get it just get it, get it away. Yeah. So I was like, ooh, that's extremely interesting. And then... So you start to go into this and you see that the lactate futile cycle happens in skeletal muscle, right? Mm -hmm. So when you, and then so you raise the temperature of the futile, uh, sorry, of the skeletal muscle, right? That links to it. So, okay. So, and then one way to trigger the futile cycle is adrenaline, mm -hmm. right? So you get into a muscle. Because that's going to bring you back to something. You get into a muscle, right, that, is, that was working really hard. So there's lactate. Yeah. You put adrenaline, and then you raise the muscle temperature. What do you get? Force recovery. Okay. Remember? Yeah. Not force. The force. With a force. Yeah. Recovery. Yeah. Not with a D, force. Like that paper that I posted yeah, yeah. That, that stated, that might be in like another podcast. I don't remember. Whatever. I put it on the, on the community anyway. It was showing that that's from two papers that we had that were showing that having carbohydrates after training does, doesn't do shit for recovery. The only thing it does is get you more glycogen. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to recovery, so force production recovery, does zero. What brings force, uh, force recovery, right? Force production, let's production, so yeah. with my accent, people don't get confused. <laughs> Force production recovery is lactate, adrenaline, and heat. Exactly what happens when I have a lactate fuel cycle in skeletal muscles. I'm like, oh. Right, okay, that's not even done. Once I get that, it triggers a very elevated state of lipolysis in adipose tissue, so fat burning. Yeah. One, so force recovery and elevated fat burning uh, system happen in this system. With heat? Yeah. Effort? Uh, and, and adrenaline. And adrenaline. Well, that sounds... I'm going to just make the jump. It just sounds an awful lot like the neoprene training experience, right? right? And, and, and then... so, but you start the neoprene, you get what? You get contact to the serum. Remember, mm -hmm. like, so my, my point was uh, sympathetic innervation produces norepinephrine. So you start there, and then eventually, once you reach failure, you're going to go from toward the freeze, adrenaline goes up, heart rate goes up, heat goes up. Every Because, you know, when you go through mm -hmm. the neoprene, yeah. Right. At well, some point, the heat becomes unbearable. Well, that's what was interesting with the and the heart rate shoots up. With my experience with neoprene training, especially with the bias towards hypertrophy yep. stuff that I was doing, is that fucking cost is real. That flight oh, yeah. cost at the yeah, end of those right. sessions is real. And and and. I mean, even sometimes when you do the rep, oh, yeah, what oh, stops this, you this is, is what I'm saying. Is the is, heat is is, 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 the is of the everything set? is so hot, so yeah. uncomfortable that I was almost getting concerned. It's like, right. man, I am finishing every one of these things, just crushed in flight. Yeah. Like every set yeah, exactly. of right. two minutes, whatever. Just, but but the results were just fucking there. Right, exactly. And, and, and so I stayed in it, of course, which means training like that exclusively for a long period of time might be uh, detrimental. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. If you know. can take it. If you can take it, if you can adapt to it. But I will say this, that like that, that process you described of like right. having to make that tip into flight and tying it in with the knee, with the knee okay, was going into flight means what means failure. Yes. Absolutely. So that means going to failure, getting the temperature through the roof. As you start to lose your heart rate, because the adrenaline is pumping. As, and staying on the fucking gas as hard as you can, as long, right. spending as much time yeah, exactly. in that right. place, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. So 
Because you have to fight for that moment, yeah. at least. Right. right, exactly. And so, like, suddenly I'm like, so that's why the neoprene mm -hmm. uh, works. Because it mimics exactly that. Yeah. And now, but wait, it gets better. Good. And so now <laughs> I keep going into that rabbit hole, thinking about the thinking about the neoprene. And I'm discovering that all that stuff is triggered. It's actually epigenetics. There's a specific RNA molecule called MIR, capital R378. This fucking guy's good. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. that's his morning. I just uh, checked down here to sit, fucking keep yeah. you keep you honest, but you nailed it. All right. Yeah, yeah. I come um, about. That's the one that triggers that thing. So the mice that have because um, it's RNA, right? Mm -hmm. Where they uh, either, can't remember where relationship was, but uh, knocked it out or put it on one of one, one of, of the other. Two. No, no, put it on extra stuff like do not get fat. Mm -hmm. They don't get fat. And now that that was similar as well as the um, melanocortin axis stuff too, though. Same it, idea. Where it was also, right. wasn't it also regardless of cal calorie intake? Right. Or was it only on so, the uh, wait, high fat? No, side? no, no. This one, they put the mice on a high fat diet. Yeah. Right. And then got the MIR378 to go. And the, the mice, even six weeks, never get fat. Crazy. Six weeks. They don't get fat. And it happens. So... But then it happens to be muscle recovery and hypertrophy. Mm -hmm. Also, that's what it triggers as well. So muscle recovery, well, force recovery was lactate, adrenaline, and, uh, and uh, temperature of the muscle going yeah. up, which is what this does, mm -hmm. because it basically triggers the lactate futile yeah. cycle, which raises the, the, um, the temperature of the muscle directly. At the same time that the adrenaline and the lactate force the, the, the recovery to happen. But this triggers as well the lipolysis. Mm -hmm. And so, so this ties in, this takes everything that you've presupposed before with this. From with the, the nervous lactate, system perspective. And also ties it into. Right. And the so lip, then lip suddenly lipolysis. the neoprene allows you to gain muscle and lose fat mm -hmm. topically. Yeah. And we are like, I don't know why it works, but I just know it works because yeah. we've done the study. But that's why it works. It's an epigenetic thing, which I, we said in a podcast, it had to be epigenetics. Yeah. That's why. Because we're triggering that shit. It's very interesting. And to, to, I don't want to take this too deep into the thing, but like we had talked about with, uh, oh, fuck, we'll go there, with yeah. like the demon in the machine stuff, is that that piece, that, that, yes. that, that epigenetic switch yeah. to where... Like, like, like that's the key that, that whatever intent that is, whatever that is, that intent, is pointing that direction, intent. whatever dictates which side that switch is on is the real, is the real power in all this. Cause everything else just seems to be happening. It's epigenetics. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it is a real power. So when you say force, you know, um, when you say energy conservation and for adrenaline, well, force recovery, mm -hmm. that just makes sense. That's energy. That's getting the energy back. Mm -hmm. Right. So that means that. And the muscle hypertrophy and all that stuff happens there. So that means that if you can take the muscle to true fatigue to force it to get the elevated temperature, to get the adrenaline going, which happens only in freeze. So that means true failure will take you to freeze and will trigger the epigenetic necessary to create hypertrophy and lipolysis at the same time. But that happens through adrenaline. And that happens to that MIR378 that we trigger with the neoprene because the stuff goes after the sympathetic and makes it fail. So you have to go to the sympathetic, make it fail, and to get the maximum effect out of it. But you have to also produce lactate and produce adrenaline. So that means that if you just fail, it's not enough. You have to fail with the neoprene going to the utmost... To the fucking ends of the earth. To the end of the earth yeah. with it, and while producing lactates, which means you can't do it with cardio. It has to be type... 2A or mm -hmm. type 2B fiber, so sprints and, and strength training, yeah. which is exactly what we saw with your program and the neoprene. Mm -hmm. Well, and there was always something that I thought as we were tying together these, some of these concepts these last few months was, it was always interesting about that sensation was an overwhelming physical sensation, which we've talked about yeah. from yes. anxiety stuff to correction of oh. error correction. Yeah, like people like don't understand what it does what it does to <laughs> and, you. And and so yeah. we've we've talked about numerous things. Like you that get have hit by that, a like, truck. Like yeah, but yeah. everything from like orgasm to high yeah. temperature stuff. Like this. all of those things are almost of therapeutic value from a mental health standpoint as well. Uh, and, somatic error. Yeah. And correction. so I find with this stuff it's just it's so interesting to me. Um, because that's a similar feeling I get to where like that feeling you just 
break you get the flight at the yeah. end of this stuff and it is fucking that overwhelming it, but, but, like, but the yeah. longer you can hang on to the yeah. uncomfortable thing and then not just this, yeah. not just sit back not in jewel while your muscles are yeah. screaming at you yeah. but to scream back and to dictate still and what to continues want to happen to be there which yeah. is intent yeah. that's back to the demon in the oh, machine and and the place i always end is i still always finish like a real fucking bitch by the yes. end of the fucking thing, you will lose sure. you will lose. but But going there and getting back in over and over again, I just think that that intense physical sensation is a thing that when people always struggle to gain size, it's because they don't go there, feel that. And it's yeah. maybe they don't know what it is. Yeah. They, they haven't yeah, got there. there. And, yeah. But that's the thing is, remember Demon in the Machine, the Maxwell's Demon? Yeah. Intent seems to be a Maxwell's Demon. Mm -hmm. Because wanting or not wanting to be there seems to be the difference. This is reading this stuff where they get lost and they go like, we don't know where this could happen or that. And I'm like, you don't understand what you just said. Mm -hmm. If you knew anything about the nervous system, which I found very strange that biologists of this level could not understand the nervous system, yeah. but they obviously don't see it, or at least they, or maybe they just don't want to say it. But like what you just said about the nervous system with adrenaline, like I'm, it's, it's, it's like, There's so many connections to be made mm -hmm. on this, except they won't because that's... Nietzsche has talked many times about hyper-specialist. Well, that's what you get. Yeah, That's what you get with uh, hyper-specialists. But so, the, the stuff, like I, this is all this morning, by the way. Yeah, so I'm going to tell you guys a little yeah, something. Julian's exactly. messaging me this morning. I could tell right away it was a... I don't even remember what I woke up to. Yeah. It was a question that Julian didn't really care to ask. It was... Make sure I'm up, and then here, check this out. And so <laughs> that is not true. I was curious to know why he was. Well, that going. is true. That is true. I That's gave true. you at least 45 <laughs> minutes before I started. <laughs> but um, but <laughs> bullshit. But <laughs> at least 45. Okay. But I, any, anyways, I'll I was, check. I was sure awake. Was I was awake, by the yeah. way. I was awake. But um, it was interesting because I'm going through this one specifically because um, I go through this, and it is. Tough to read. This was the one on the MIR 37, oh, that one 378. Is But the thing with this is very interesting is too, is when you get to the very end of this Exactly. Stuff, If you read, that's when you go. They, well then, but they also say in there, they're like, and to look, to try to find anything else yeah. about this thing, a yeah, little, uh, yeah. little action, to try to find out about this. It's not drugs, mom. It's just boogers. Yeah, exactly. Just boogers. Yeah. Just boogers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to try to find out anything else about even this segment of RNA is essentially oh, it's a mess because it's they said idea. it has been miscategorized. It yeah. has been claimed to be essentially so much four that. different things that they have been testing that are this or are one side. And ha and so anything that you find about this has the potential or things yeah. could, studies could be about this and yeah. not fucking even, you're not going to find it. Because of a categorization right. problem, but that you know that which surprised, is a fucking unbelievable. No, but that, that surprised me a lot because this one is a cure to obesity. Yeah, it's very. By, simple. by the way, speaking of this, two things. First, this means this is a new Psalms or whatever the fuck they call it. If you take this, this is muscle is that hypertrophy. You can do? Well, I don't know if you would take it. You'd have to take something it's to molecule. activate. Oh, no, that, it's, a, it's a molecule. It's a molecule. I okay. bet you, if we take it. Uh, there's a way to activate oh, send this. Send me some guys. It's right. Huge. So that's Or, what I wanted to say. <laughs> And you'll get cancer. Like this shit fuels cancer cells. Yeah. So um, it's a Warburg effect. If you start playing with this, yeah. I'm just saying. So yeah, because you know what else grows a lot? Cancer. Cancer. <laughs> exactly. So let's not go for just growth for growth's sake here. No, but look, but, look what this is. Force recovery. Yeah. Uh, like, by the way, I reminds you of growth hormone. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's an entire thing there, yeah, but then we're going to get into well, telomeres there, real fast. There's also a really interesting thing with growth hormone, too, about lethargy and things like that and an almost right. freeze state uh, with people mm. that take a lot of growth hormone. You feel very, like, right. logy and How kind of slow in time. Yeah, and I, th I always kind of attributed it simply to the recovery state that it was great for recovery and healing but how so i'd be very and curious why. to see growth hormone those, and adrenaline yeah those layers of course i'm not go, familiar yeah. with as far as how they relate to each other but be um, lethargy and growth hormone is is common um it's, it's just they get it's hot? common i probably i don't know yeah. well i mean they're so big anyway so yeah <laughs> that doesn't mean it's anyways but, but you get um, big enough you're always going to be hot right well speaking of that so first of all like the cure Uh, to uh, to obesity because again those mice don't get fat because mm -hmm. it triggers so much lipolysis right yeah. and but now let's look at what could cause uh, part of the issue like that accumulation of ATP if you get carbs all the time 
non-stop, 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 right? You would trigger glycolysis all the time. Mm -hmm. So you would have a buildup of ATP continuously. Which would then always kind of need right. to be Right, so cleared. then you need, you need that so they would get hot all the time, but that also means like the adrenaline. It's just wasted energy. So you're in right? freeze all the time, the adrenaline is pumping continuously. Which is stress. Right, exactly. So you could see the relationship between the, that accumulation of ATP that just makes well, the system go I'm, fucking nuts with too much carb. So, that, you know. What I'm just thinking aloud too is it, does, it also seems like you're then, where does your time fit with which there is fat loss? You know what I mean? Like, like, like if you're spending no time in lipolysis right. at all. Yeah. And then you're not having any sort of localized... Right, exactly. That high so, yeah, high yeah. consumption. Of, of course, plenty of people lose fat in it. But, no, but, remember, but, but how much of your right, but remember, me metabolic energy is wasted? But remember, just when you have the carb at first, you don't have adrenaline up for three hours. It's, yeah. So if you keep being on carbs nonstop, you will always you have a adre low adrenaline level. So maybe low adrenaline level means no stress felt. Mm -hmm. You're still in freeze, but you're not feeling it. No, that's no. not you. It's me. It's okay. itching as usual. Whenever I speak now, it itches. Must be the beard, but <laughs> so the mustache gets uh, beyond a certain yeah. length. Yeah, you it, get a few uh, rogue hairs. Yeah, exactly. Or no. just, you know. but so you could see how carbs. So back to a sympathetic fix. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because if adrenaline is freeze, then having carbs keeps you out of it. Out of it. But after three hours, it raises again. It. So that means that you would have More. to have carbs every three hours. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a bodybuilder diet. Yeah. You have to have carbs every three hours. Yeah. How fascinating is that? That means but you the, fuck up your recovery too. Well, you that's what I'm wondering. Uh, 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 I mean, it's hard to sit here and say that that doesn't work just objectively because it seems like plenty of bodybuilders are big and lean and, and all that stuff. Just drugs and other things. Right. We, we have to put... Yeah, yeah but okay. But may, maybe the drugs make up for the nervous system, mm -hmm. like which is something I've yeah. always stated. Uh, of course, but of course the, the carbs work. But for example, like you would raise your blood sugar levels, mm -hmm. right? So that means that you're, you're in fight. You lower the adrenaline right away, which means you're in fight. So carbs would keep you in Some fight. Some value. There's definitely value. Right. For, I guess for the same reasons that you use it in training. Right. Where, you know what I mean? Where it is just enough to keep right. you... So, but for example, when we say carbs are recovery, first of all, the paper says not true. But even like um, you have some carbs... Sympathetic goes back up, you feel better. Well, that's you're gonna say, oh, I'm, re I'm, it works on recovery. I have more energy. Mm -hmm. But now you attribute the energy to the chemical effect. What well, all you did was to boost your nervous system, <coughs> but yeah. you didn't change the main, mm -hmm. the main stuff. And by the way, you have so well, much glucose in the system. So while well, maybe skipping over uh, care for the the larger picture, like we talked about right. before, but the you general could probably trigger that as well because if you have a lot of carbs, it's a lot of glucose so therefore you know like coming like straight mm -hmm. so glycolysis goes up too much atp you trigger the stuff it makes you that's yeah. why maybe the high carb diet low fat actually works well at leaning you out yeah. a lot of women do well on that mm -hmm. but you could see the trick being used yeah. in order to do that and it would lower your adrenaline level which makes probably makes you feel less in freeze mm -hmm. so then carbs are a, are a miraculous drug for the short term, yeah. till it's not. Yeah, like till it's not. And then, so that would be a major addicting uh, force then. Yeah. Well, and then once it starts to skid off the rails, you have everything biased towards that. And everything way, from habits to right. your training output. Exactly. It's, it's always built. the same. You use carbs to lower your adrenaline level because you're stressed. Guess what? You're not going to fix the stress because mm -hmm. you found a trick to not feel it. Yeah. So then you need more carbs more often. And you start getting weight, and now you're getting pissed, and that, 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 that. So it always leads to the same place. But you could see how from four to six weeks, it could work really, really well. well. If I wanted to lean out, higher carbs, low fat, steady cardio, off I go. Mm -hmm. Lipolysis through the roof. I'm yeah. like, look, I'm lean. Yeah. Constantly uh, driven the adrenaline down, the sympathetic up. Inflammation comes about. Fuck myself up, but for four weeks, I'm lean. Yeah then you could see exactly what we see all the time, which means you would trigger lipolysis to the, through the roof, which means you would shed the fat, yeah. get your six pack, right? Stay happy because you're uh, sympathetic and the glucose level is high enough through the carbs. The problem is you're taking a baseball bat to the system, but for four weeks, fuck yeah, it would work. Yeah. Or drugs. Yeah, what's well, stuff to maintain to keep up maintenance on something like that forever and ever because it's scalable. Because you can see you can yeah. see the scalability issues right away. Right. And by the way, what are you doing? Trade-off. What are you doing to your nervous system? Mm -hmm. That means that you're pounding the sympathetic 
constantly. That means inflammation, because adrenaline inflammation, you see it there too. Yeah. So that means you're, you no energy conservation. So by the way, it's always energy expenditure because you're always in the sympathetic. So you're basically cashing in on your credit card. You know what you should never do? Take the cash out of the credit card. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what you're doing when you have the <coughs> high carb, low fat diet. For four weeks, you want to go to a wedding, you could definitely do it. Just like you can take the MIR378. Pretty sure it's going to give you cancer and you're going to die, but you, you're going to look good. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I mean? So I think that's why the high, high carbs, low fat diet works so well and works so well for such a short time. And then after, fucks people up. Because mm -hmm. how many women have gotten a six pack out of the high carb, low fat diet just to lose their periods and feel like shit and everything? Well, yeah, because you're going sympathetic, 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 yeah. lipolysis, 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 and well, it's, it, it's more work demands, more carbs for recovery, less with diminishing and results the stress from level, there. And the there. stress level will go up. Yeah. Because remember, like you're always chasing the adrenaline, like you're always uh, pushing the adrenaline away, away, but he adapts. The same problem come in, by the way, because at first, oh, I feel awesome. Yeah, but you're still not dealing with the yeah. problems. You're still like, it's it's impossible to maintain them. So for anyone who waited to this far to try the neoprene at all or any of this stuff, so, okay. God damn it, man. What's wrong with exactly. you? Exactly. So that means you're going to need... Right. So let's take this and make a training session based mm -hmm. on that. So that would mean, first of all, I'm going to need to produce massive amount of ATP through my training sessions. Two ways to do this. I'm going to have carbs while I train. Yep. Like sugar. Mm -hmm. um, glucose is going to flow in. Then I can do what I've... Another paper I put was showing that if you do like a 10 second sprint, it raises your blood sugar level mm -hmm. for back to noradrenaline versus yeah. adrenaline and stuff like that. So that means that during my session, I'm going to do a set followed by a 10 to 30 seconds uh, sprint on an airdyne or whatever, right? That's going to raise my blood yeah. sugar. I'm going to have uh, sugar while I train. That's the moment to get the carbs, right? And after that, I'm going to want to take the exercise to absolute failure because I'm going to push myself into freeze. So for example, we could do a song of two minutes, yeah. just... Time Shit. stuff, chaos reps, massive variation into single muscle area. Like don't stop moving. All of it, yeah. Don't stop. Yeah. So take it to the maximum. Right? Don't stop moving. With something that creates uh, a drive toward the sympathetic side. So for example, sympathetic innervation, the neoprene. neoprene. And then I'm going to get the massive amount, which is exactly the program you're going to release right now. That's yeah. why we're going to release this podcast right away because that we've seen that this works. Yeah. Like, well, that's what's uh, tell, tell again your client, like, uh, what's his name? Yeah, so uh, Garrett, I think he Garrett, put on yeah. uh, five and a, I think it was five and a half kilos of muscle. Which is, uh, this is, uh, by the way, this is literally... Uh, now, more... now, the, his, his was 12 weeks. Okay, but, but this uh, is more but, yeah, than, holy shit. This is more than Ronnie Coleman did per year. Yeah. Remember, he was saying? Yeah, wait, I should look that up again. Yeah. 11.3 pounds and lost 2.9 of fat. Okay. Mm -hmm. All, right, so yep. All right, guys. So I had to double check that. Yep. I didn't want to get anything wrong. But so Garrett had gained 11.3 pounds of so Five kilos mass. of muscle. Yep. And, and lost basically a one kilo, and a half kilo of fat. Of fat yeah. In a, basically two runs. So 12 yeah. weeks. 12, yeah. Which is. That's about, uh, which yeah. is. Which is. I mean, those are, th those are drugs numbers for someone yeah. who I know is a natural athlete who I've coached yep. for quite some time yeah. so that's fucking yeah pretty yeah real. those are drug numbers yeah <laughs> yeah like but it was it would be shit and yeah. so uh how did you explain again how did you structure the because so we knew it worked we knew we, we had some things that we knew worked yeah. and yeah. for me it was in my mind it was neoprene and it was really uh it was, it was neoprene coming from by the way wanting julian to not go into neoprene because i yeah. thought it was weird I know everybody <laughs> thought I've, they st so, you see, we have people on mentoring program that still haven't done it. Yeah, it's crazy. Even though it's a year later. Yeah. But uh, so basically, I, I, I took that principle on its own and went at it from a that I was going to get better muscle activation and that I wanted heat and discomfort at the muscular level. I the, right. built the thing around the idea that we needed to put maximal stress. We talk about general versus specific. Yeah. I uh, think your most general stress would be carrying a heavy yoke, as, heaviest yoke as possible. Yeah. My most specific thing would be what I did to my fucking calves the other day. Yeah, exactly. so, like, like, we're uh, to the point yeah, where yeah. I just am fucking still dying, you know, from it. But we and, from a principal perspective, we are trying to apply the maximum possible sympathetic response directly into the muscle. Yep. 
yeah. yeah. And, but, and, and I did it for, by the way, to lose the fat, not gain the muscle. Yeah. It just happened. Yeah, it just happened. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually kind of, I actually kind of went into this thinking that I would be significantly uh, weaker. That I, it, it, yeah. In the end yeah. of this, that I may be leaner, uh, that weaker. I would build yeah. a little bit of muscle, but that I would maybe take a bit of a hit. Mm -hmm. hit. And everyone that I've run through it has come through. Because I have enough still, there's some... There's at least a heavy stimulus and yeah. the strongman stuff still in the in the program. Uh, that there is definitely enough to keep a person strong, but the yeah. fucking neoprene shit was just it just works so well. What I did not understand is the muscle I was gaining. Remember, I talked about mm -hmm. it because I was doing that. So what was the idea? Was sympathetic innervation uh, connecting to it in order to create uh, lipolysis, yeah. the, the fat burning effect because of the melanocortin axis and all that stuff. I was like, all right, so no adrenaline. Everybody, you know, neurotransmitter, so you feel like this. Mm -hmm. And the idea was, well, let's push it to the maximum, all the way up to freeze. I wasn't sure all the way up to freeze. Yeah. Now I understand why it worked. Well, and freeze for me was like, was the thing that I, that was the, the piece I wasn't yeah. sure of. Yeah. If I needed it, if yeah. I was spending too exactly. much time in it, right. I did not know. I did not know either. I, I wasn't it, sure. did a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, Plus it freeze effective. for me, I was like, I push so hard in training. What do you mean by freeze? I always end up in yeah, the I just don't know. Yeah, yeah, I just exactly. kind of don't know. Right. It's just kind of, but there's. But so that's telling me. That's the point. You have to go to freeze. Yeah. So you have to push until you collapse. And and there's a big difference in going to freeze in a general sense versus in a specific sense. You need to yep. go until your muscles don't work. Until yep. they yell so loud and yep. they cannot yell yep. anymore. I mean, it is, yep. it is, it, it does It's localized like freeze. Localized Not freeze. Not overall freeze. Yeah. Localized freeze. And you'll freeze. get there eventually too. <laughs> yeah. Localized <laughs> but, freeze. Like yeah. you have to make those muscle quit. Yeah. But that piece, With the neoprene. that piece, so, and finding heat it in, was the key, and heat, yeah. and that's where the neoprene, that's where finding uh, an affinity for like the the painful hot mm -hmm. pump, not the fucking pump that's cool. Where yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, hey, the right. one where, yeah. but I have yeah. when I put those things in, yeah. where I'm like, this hurts so yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a pump Cramps. that's trying to tell you to cramp so bad. But the reason I went for heat, that's why I did the neoprene, what was because of the entropy. Mm -hmm. You know, that is expressed in heat measures yeah. and a lot of stuff. I was like, so I, was, I wanted something that touches the skin in order to activate, so compresses the skin uh, and creates heat. I was like, well, the neoprene would work. Yeah. And I was like, let me try. And, but again, what surprised me the most me at the time was how much muscle I gained. I was like, I don't understand. Yeah. Why? Why is he getting muscle? Now I get it. Yeah. That's why we activated. Yeah. Well, what's, that's what I like is we had the one thing, the melanocortin axis and a bit of and the background behind yeah. it, some principles to go with. And and that I think is it's, it's a real testament to the value of just fucking doing a thing. You know what I mean? Like like, ooh, I, I didn't I didn't questions. need to be convinced yeah. beyond the fact that I thought it was a little bit weird that you wanted me to wear a fucking scuba suit to train and that you told yeah. me it would work and you gave me just enough why it was like, all right, there's not enough in the way for me to not try it right now. And so trying it, uh, I what a shame yeah, had I waited me. had I waited a year and a half. Right. By the way, so to now for all of this, this to come together, this and it's just to says what I thought would happen. Minus the muscle, uh, I thought would happen just out of principles. Mm -hmm. You can, and this is such a, a, an old conversation and one we need to keep having. We have to have podcasts on that. Logical evidence is the one that matters most. Yes. What I see, the biggest problem that I see in the studies that I read is the studies is made and the conclusion is whack. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they like logical thinking. Yeah. You could tell that is not part of the PhD program. I can tell that's actually part of the philosophy class. Yeah. This is how, this is what you need to do. You need to read philosophy to understand logical thinking. If you look at the principles of the nervous system and you apply logical thinking, you get the neoprene. And then a year and a half later, you can explain it on a molecular level. Mm -hmm. But yeah, explaining it on a molecular level does not make it more right than it was then because we saw it work yes and that's that's my thing is, is this is this was good i mean it's tremendous i think there's so much that we can build upon this as far as so planning we, so we can be with, more precise yes and that's what i think planning being specific yep. being precise in in programming and now using the tool very specifically yep. uh, and then uh, now you know what to hunt the larger for. picture you know what to hunt for yeah. you're looking for the freeze for. you're looking for the muscle getting warm yeah all that shit the heart rate jumping yeah. by the way the second i do incline here my heart rate goes up i was like mm -hmm. ah that's why adrenaline is pumping yeah. i'm starting to lose 
the, the Vegas nerve, that means I'm going toward, you know, in the full fight and then eventually to freeze. I'm like, so that's how I make progress. So yeah. it made a lot more sense today. Well, and having seen the results firsthand with clients I've yes, worked with. Exactly. I mean, my wife ran through the thing too yep. for six weeks yep. and basically six weeks without neoprene and then six weeks with. And it was really good results on the training for six weeks and then six weeks with the neoprene and the results were even better. Yeah. Which is crazy because normally your second six weeks yeah. you would feel some sort of a, but a drop. You know what this means? This will keep us from stopping. Yeah. It will keep me on the neoprene because now I get it. Yeah. So that's, the, that's where the power of understanding is as well. So to, to go back to the conversation, we ca I can, so I can figure stuff out out of principles alone. Mm -hmm. So for all of you that call me crazy whenever I do the neoprene or the protocol or that shit, remember <coughs> when I did the protocol, like I had a number of messages from the, my own mentoring program telling me, uh, don't do it. Yeah. Well, Why are you going into nutrition? Uh, you're wrong. Uh, and then they were all like, no one wanted, I remember no one yeah. wanted to do it at first, the yeah. protocol. Well, no one too. wanted to do it. Yeah. <laughs> No well, one wanted to do the even, protocol at first. I and, had to force people. And even, I even remember that because I was like, we had come in and just, you had been on the nutrition basically kind of since I moved to Europe yep. a little bit before you. And it was uh, kind of a moving thing. I didn't know where it was going. And I just remember you just wouldn't stop talking about it, which was odd yep. because you had never really spoke to nutrition nope, much, never. which in hindsight now I would have, I wouldn't say that I would fault you for it. But now if I look back on it, like I, how dare you? not go into intuition yeah you know what i mean like to do everything you do in movement and yeah. and how people yeah. and, and feel and, and try to do the wholeness especially now when we talk about specialization versus yeah. fr and fragmentation yeah. and the uh the the issues with specialization and everything we want to pull everything together to a larger picture and why how would dare you, you yeah. not you know why nutrition. i'll tell you why but at the moment yeah i was like Julian, you ain't never said anything about yeah. nutrition. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, it's because I was hiding away from the emotional issues coming with food. Mm -hmm. When you talk food, people lose their shit. And I just didn't want to have to deal with people on that level. And we are neck deep in that when we do talk nutrition a lot. Oh, like it's it's a touchy subject. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and you know what I didn't want also is, is the, so weird the it's people not... coming out of the woods. And but this is the one time where the comments on on YouTube uh, we had to cancel. It's usually on nutrition mm -hmm. because the people just insult us straight yeah. up. And I was like, I don't want to deal with that. But then at some point I realized like you cannot not do it. Yeah. It's like fuck it, I'll look into it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, which is something I'm doing with biology right now. I did not want to go into biology. Exactly. I hate biology, but I'm forced to do it because otherwise I can't get the shit. Yeah. I can't. I wish I could find someone who would explain to me all this because, like, for the futile cycle, mm -hmm. right? Like I was told many, many times, you can't have both at the same time. That's why I, I repeated it. Yeah. But at the time, I was like, yeah, but how come I read about it? And that's where, see, my problem is with authority is not nearly as big as it needs to be. Yeah. Because I should have said, fuck you all, let me figure it out myself. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I keep going back to all the time. Is like, had I not, ha I needed to figure everything. You need to figure yeah. everything out for yourself. Yes, you do. And, and yep. these are really good. These reinforce you if you're listening and you've done the neoprene stuff. This should stuff. convince it you should to do the neoprene. You. It should, at it least should try give you, four give you a weeks good starting for, point. for Jesus Christ, yeah. Jesus Christ, four weeks. Yeah. But this explain, this will keep me on it. Yeah. Because there's one thing about, so again, the, the importance of logical evidence. You can figure out almost anything out of logical evidence to a certain point. Mm -hmm. Like the Greeks figure out a lot. Yeah. Just through logical evidence. Then you need to start going toward the empirical stuff and, and, and everything. Yeah. So, but that empirical is just the tip of the spear. It's the top of the pyramid. The base of the pyramid is logical evidence. The top of the pyramid is empirical evidence. Empirical evidence doesn't prove anything. It just allows you to, once you have the stuff to see where it's not. Yeah. And that's what this gives me. But I like this because this will keep me on the neoprene. Yeah. It, it, so it will change my training. Like I'll, if even if I have to train less, I'll train less, but I will keep the neoprene and trying to make myself as hot and miserable as I can in every single training session. Oh, if we ever get summer here in the Netherlands. We're good on that, right? We'll be good yeah, eventually. exactly. I thought, I well, I, w I might not put the because I did just the jacket and the shorts. Mm -hmm. That might be that every time. Yeah. But the, what it did right here to the upper pec, like my heart rate, I, I had to stop on heart rate going too high. Not, I could have pushed the muscle. I just my body could not. Overall, wouldn't the heart rate was going yeah. was going way too high. Like mm. you know, like mm -hmm. like uh, I could start to hear it and everything. It was so high. So that was just 
me going full, and it's always that left upper pain. Well, and there's always something I've, I always noticed when doing these things is I was having to not really calm, but down regulate the overall yeah, without exactly. comp without compromising the output in mm -hmm. the specific muscle, yeah. which was hard because you would get to some moments where you're 60 seconds in, 90 seconds in, and you are fucking yeah. lit up. And yeah, it's and chaos. You're going heavier, lighter, wider, exactly. shorter. But you just and don't just, stop moving. Yeah. And, and, and everything, it's not your muscle wanting to quit. It's everything else. Yeah. 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 And, and I would realize sometimes it was a matter of wanting to quit. Sometimes it was a matter of being just way too elevated up and just fight too hard. It's like, I need to get that it, down it, just enough to put the work you know, here because I otherwise I feel like I'm To go from 15 energy. to 20 reps, you know what I did is I stopped at seven. Even though I could have kept on going, it's like, no. Yeah. yeah. Calm your breathing, then at 12, calm your breathing, then 15, then 18, yeah. then 20. Yeah. But I have to, I can't just wait until I'm at, and then, no, it doesn't work. And that's I also why you can't do reps for two minutes, because you're not doing it for most of it. Yeah. <laughs> you're not doing that for yeah. most of it. Yeah. And, and that's the that's thing, is I did, this makes me, well, it's good. This could, could reinforce some of my bad habits, too, which is going right to the awful pain yeah. place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because it does, it, it, is, that, is that inefficient? As far as, uh, oh, is it? like, yeah, yeah, I, but in, in my opinion, it's super inefficient for me. Let's just say I'm doing fucking bicep curls, right? That I'm doing right. it at this rate. It is going to be inefficient if I just jump into fucking deep water and I mm -hmm. hurt right away and I'm suffering. I'm barely getting rep of fight, drop weight, fight, drop weight, and, and just going and going and going like madness. I could do double the reps at a more moderate weight and just get yeah. the gradual thing. But the fact is, you're not spending that time. But actually, just okay. Let's talk about the efficient. Let's let's talk about efficiency. Because remember the podcast we did about like DOMS as mm -hmm. being a nervous system stuff, not a, a muscle, you know, tear yeah. or anything like that. And that's where the progress comes from. What is actually efficient is going there for muscle growth. When we do assistance work like bicep curls, that's what it's not to become the world champion of bicep no. curls. So it's just to create growth so that yeah. we can use it on main movements. Yes. So maybe for assistance work, that, that is, is efficient. Ex well, for efficient, and that's the thing in a general sense, absolutely. Yeah. Not a rep to rep sense, because efficiency so, doesn't matter, only fucking the intense. Right, exactly. Work so at maybe a for level. assistance work, this is the way. Yeah. Well, and that's like we'll talk about the 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 six week the meathead muscle yeah, exactly. big rig training block. I like that's it. My, we need an acronym. My greatest my greatest yeah, branding exactly. moment, by the way. Uh, but 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 in that is that is the nature of the accessory work is that I I New had print. I yeah. had to get away from because it was a piece I always fell to. I had to get away from that. I'm going to do my five sets of ten yeah. reps of delt raises. I, I, I last do three my weeks doing this and then I'm yeah. going to leave the gym. Yeah. So maybe and we were not efficient, actually. Maybe efficiency is going there yeah. for muscle growth. Yeah. So that means for assistance work, just put on the neoprene and make yourself as miserable as possible. So maybe that is not necessarily... I don't and know. Not, we'll see. And not lungs. Not, not even necessarily heart rate. Yeah. Miserable. No, it just happens because I touched this. Yeah, this but but yeah. this isn't like met. Oh, no, it's not miserable. a med con. This yeah. is. This, this is, is different. If you're, if you're on the fucking leg press, it's time to die. It's freeze time. Yeah. 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 So I think, uh, like, I'm gonna traumatize yourself. Yeah, I won't do that for <laughs> the strong men, but anything else will. Uh... Well, that's a piece too. That's a piece that I did not consider. Uh, before I'd, I'd use neoprene in any number of sessions mm -hmm. to throw it around there. And now having seen some of this, at least I know that the resources would best be spent, my neoprene resources yep. would best be spent on my accessory work and possibly, and basically kind of the power bodybuilding. But again, that depends what what you call efficiency. Because uh, like, for example, on a, on a sled sprint, right? You put the whole neoprene, the muscle are going to blow up. Is that what we do the less That's sled the sprint point. for? Yeah. So maybe not maybe. for like a, a your career while actually trying to reach a weight because yeah. you know like I'm just upping upping yeah. the stuff for competition or whatever. It's like you know squatting a certain mm -hmm. way where you need the skill and you know. So maybe there's a maybe it depends where you train. But mm -hmm. if you train just to get leaner and bigger, then fuck it. Yeah. Well, it, it always it, it, this there was a piece I used to always use. I tell people you need to like handicap yourself for this exercise a little exactly. bit, which yep. meant on the sled, which meant if it's a 100 meter sled sprint, uh, you need to run so fast that you can only maintain that for the first 20 meters. Exactly. And, and then, then, and then whatever happens. But yeah. then whatever happens after that, according to all of this, is what matters. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So Up but until maybe, that point, if you wait 80 meters to do that, you fucking wasted 80 meters. Yeah. So maybe on the sled sprint, actually, it will probably, it might be the point. I mean, isn't it the point I, to die anyway? Yeah. yeah. The point of the sled on the sled is to die. Yeah. 
Who cares how much weight you use on the harness? Yeah. How would you measure anyway? <laughs> I mean, it depends yeah, on the parking lot, matter, on the sled. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The point is to die. Yeah. So not in competition, obviously. Yeah. I would not use the new opinion competition, but for training, if it's to build a muscle and, and all that stuff, then... Yeah. All right. Well, I think we've got a lot to build on here. Yeah. I'm kind of stoked. That's going to be a lot of rabbit holes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, you can get the Meathead Muscle Big Rig Training Program. That is six weeks of basically that. working with me. Six weeks of this, uh, just the, the oh. neoprene, the bodybuilding yeah, accessories. I everything. <laughs> oh. the, all the nasty shit. Yep. Uh, it's that I did this morning. Tried and true uh, methods that we've been working on for quite a bit of time. But you can get that at learning.strongfit.com forward slash let's get thick. Or in the link in his bio. So yeah, I'm that's going to close. Pummeled. By the time you're seeing this, it's going to close in like a week, week and a half. So act fast. Spots are limited. Group calls with me. You get the program. You can also re reuse the program. You can keep the program forever. So you can use this training block and the things you learn to just plug in a couple times a year when you want to focus on size and nothing well, else. I'm, I might stay on it. Yeah. yeah. I might stay on it because this tells me... Um, Epigenetics. Ooh. Well, there's a, there's a, there is a long-term thing that I always wonder if something like this is, is activated regularly over a long period of time. What that, Maybe I get uh, cancer. Man, what, the cancer of being huge and awesome? <laughs> I get cancer on my biceps. Um, uh, anyway, that's a great sales pitch. Come do, the, do this training program. You might big rate cancer. cancer. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that's the sales pitch for that thing. Thanks for listening. Julian's at StrongFit1. I'm at Tyler F. and Stone. All of our stuff is at StrongFit.com. Sandbags and apparel, StrongFitEquipment.com and MantaFitness.com.au for Australia and New Zealand. I have, every once in a while when I forget, somebody will message me like, "Can I get? how do I get sandbags? You ship them to Australia? And I'm like, fuck, I, fucking, I, forget I again? forgot yeah. for like three weeks. But um, they carry all the stuff there. Julian has his functional integration training template, which is the kind of comprehensive overall strong fit training template that is the the big I'm beast gonna, of doing i'm gonna lowering it to uh four days a week he's gonna and, drop and, the frequency down yeah and put more of those print at the end yeah but i'm gonna take it to four days a week yeah no one is doing five yeah <laughs> no one is doing five I've, we're, i'm seeing some people stretching their their weeks out yeah and then it gets to the point where it's it. a little much yeah. i get it no i get it it's it's breaking it's even for me oh my god <laughs> even for me sometimes i'm like dude really yeah yeah um, but that's the spot there. We should have, I think soon, we'll have another uh, program for Richard's stuff coming up soon as well. Yeah, we're we'll giving him, him a small break well. first. Yeah, he yeah. needs a little bit of a break. <laughs> it's six weeks of anxiety-based. Six, eight uh, weeks. It was eight weeks, I think. Yeah, eight six, weeks. Right? Do you know what I want him to do? I want him to do a program for um, assistance work and how to do it. Find the muscles. Yeah. Find the muscles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that, that'll, that'll fit in really well. We have his kind of intro to anxiety stuff. Yeah. We have my thing, which is just you know what we need? kill we need your need, muscles, and his is going need to be, a, make that an intro to strong fit programs. Yeah. Guys, if you have ideas of intro to strong fit programs, bring it on. We might do like six-week courses on yeah. whatever intro you want or need. Yeah. That's one, one, need. one thing we've noticed is that Julian will run really far ahead of everybody if we let him. And so uh, so we need oh, you. Oh, I will. If you're back then. No, no, no. Not if we let him. I will. <laughs> but we can still do a whatever. I, wanna, I, want, I want to leave. Oh, I'd like to leave yeah. some breadcrumbs to some of the exactly. more approachable product or concepts yeah. before Julian gets too far away. And uh, Yeah. So if you guys want like, not big enough cycles, but like... Um, it just needs to be, uh, I think, of some specificity, a little bit of specificity to do the work. Yeah, on I would agree with that. Specific. Like, like that introduction to uh, to uh, anxiety. We can do introduction to uh, assistance work. Mm -hmm. We could even do an introduction to strongman movements. Yeah. Uh, if you guys, whatever you guys want us to do, put it in the comments. Why yeah. would you like to see a six weeks course yeah. off? Yeah, and I think there's also other options for that as well. As if it's if you you want something very specific, um, there is also Julian has one on one coaching. Richard has one on one coaching. Yeah. If there's anything but, in this yeah. regard, you can email me at Tyler at strongfit.com, and we can try to put together something because we do we need to be bringing people along with this. No, but plus we want to help you guys. So if you don't yeah. tell us what you need, sometimes me I I'll just move forward. Yeah. So I, I need uh, we need help in knowing what you need. Yeah, we have, we we need more. Yeah, we need more clarification from you guys about what you need and and so you need to ask yeah 
Yeah. So ask us. Yeah, ask us. You can message. Uh, you can message me at Tyler we'll do at the program. Yeah, and we six can to eight put, weeks. We can put something together. For I, I kind it. of like those six to eight weeks program. Actually, it's, it seems to be working fairly. In the way I wanted. In I never w- wanted to do them before, but it seems to be well, working. Well, the difference is, is it's not running on its own either. It's not yeah. here's six weeks and do it. Yeah. And, and that was a piece that I, I had put mine, which is very fluid in that uh, people, it can be used. It, mm-hmm. It's made to be self-adjusting. But uh, but I decided that at least for right now that I want to do it as a guided coaching thing because there's too many questions right. that I can yes. predict that I, I just think need to be answered instead of just assuming that people but are going to get it. You know, like that, but that stuff is you could do it like, you know, it's going to be six weeks and then take four weeks off and then do it again in the sense of I can't imagine people training the way I train right now all year long. Yeah. I can do it, but I, yeah. because I don't have a nine to five job. Yeah. And I'm crazy enough to not mind. But I can't imagine many people wanting to go through the template on a year-long <laughs> basis. Like I, uh... Well, also that you can, you can come in, you can do something, you can learn it directly from one of us. Yeah. And then you can use it. And then the you can take a break and then reuse yeah. it on the next one or even until the next group or whatever. But my guess is like we're asking a lot out of people. Well, I don't always forget that. But Julian sometimes does. <laughs> That's because I'm daddy. That's why I expect a lot from you. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Well, thanks a bunch for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Links for all the stuff we talked about should be in the things below. So, smash that like button. Subscribe. This one? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>